and for three weeks it rained, oh how it rained, for grief had made the young season cry, and when it didn't rain it was foggy, misty, and gloomy, for the salty tears of the ancient magicians hung heavy in the air. The mist moved out and covered the land, and the sun shone nowhere on the earth. We all wept when the magical dream ended, and the earth was cold for a time. Yes, it was for Merlin that the skies cried. Percival thought of the old saying that went, Even the blackest night must die under the fiery wheels of Apollo's golden chariot. And so it probably would, after enough tears were shed. But Percival was desperate, and after a while he cried out a sundance. Come back, fire in the sky, shine upon us once more. Just to have me look at you, just to feel your warmth raining down, I would dance the darkness away. Percival awoke early during the next morning song, a glint of sparkling armor in his eyes, for the sun returned. For a few minutes he was nearly blinded to the dawn's light until his eyes became accustomed to the glare. During this time he thought of his farewell to Merlin, that half man, half devil. Percival even dared to think that Merlin had certainly done more good for the earth than God had done. Merlin served neither the devil nor God, much to the dismay of each. Merlin served only man. Well, how do we know this anyway? It is because the legends tell us so. Yes, it was time to go, on foot for a while until he could retrieve the horse that he'd let go, although any other would do for now. He found straight away a half-wild bay mare, which took to him well. There were many good riderless horses still wandering about long after the battle. Percival rode through the day, but with no real sense of urgency, taking to his travels in a rather leisurely fashion. That night, the clear skies uncovered a hidden wonder, the pale unicorn full moon that marked another month gone by. There it was, plain as day in the twilight sky. There too, memories danced again to yet another time. Percival felt so very content now, content with this day of sunshine and moon glow. Yes, the lion sun rules the toiling day, but the unicorn moon brings wisdom and calm in the night. At the magic times of dawn and twilight, when the lion and unicorn battle together to capture the heavens, only beauty and goodness in men and women can ensure the victory of wisdom. What lay along the road ahead? Why, adventure, of course, that old song that had to be sung by the knights. Ancient magicians like Merlin seem not to directly crave these things, but we do. It is the curse and blessing of the knights. And how we knights love to bring back these tales of adventures to that round table of our fine companions. To whom shall we bring our tales and our writings now? To you, dear reader. To you. Back on the road again early the next morning, Percival could not help but lapse into daydreams to while away the time. Daydreams, he thought later, were actually continuous dreams, much like those of the night, which surface now and then out of our souls through the noise of consciousness. Perhaps they came from the gods. They were the elixir that made one alive and kept one alive, a subterranean life flow of desires and regrets seldom shared, for so intimate they were, plays within plays, dreams within dreams, it felt somehow strange to be observing these events in oneself, these bits and pieces of emotion and random feelings that are recorded within our memories, which might otherwise go unnoticed. These thoughts, these observations of thoughts, was this the rare working of the rational and the emotional in tandem? All this Percival thought and later wrote down in the Celtic Chronicles.